Hey guys, this is Bruce Marshall for Simpler Trading doing the nightly video update for Wednesday, July the 11th. And I've got the S&P, you know, you guys know I always like to start with the S&P. Um, today we had a pretty sloppy, choppy day, not a lot going on. Um, let me clean this up, I'll pull this down. And this is the ticks. Obviously, we had just chop back and forth, and, and a little extreme here at the tail end of the day, uh, negative 1,000 tick. But um, notice the spike in vol here off this cell uh, into the open this morning. And if you were watching the uh, the futures last night, the Dow futures were down about 300 points at one time, and the uh, you know the selling looked like it was going to be pretty ugly. And in my opinion, you know, this actually was not as bad as it might have been. So if we look here, um, these are, <clears throat> excuse me, these are our ranges um, here uh, for today. <clears throat> so we opened down here, uh, rallied up, failed, rally, failed, and then we touched down here, you know, rallied, uh, failed this held off this low rallied failed it held bounced it did not hold right here we broke through and i thought at that point i was thinking yeah you know this might get a little ugly um but it didn't it bounced back pretty pretty handily and we never could clear this level again and we came all the way back down and touched this support level again um so you know you would think from looking at this, you know, that tomorrow's open might be a continuation down, and it might. I, you know, there's no way to know. Uh, let's flip this over to the ES, which is actually still trading, and we'll see. Yeah, we're getting this is after hours. We're getting a little follow through here. Doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that we'll have a down day. Um, it's not uh, that that's not enough momentum to make me want to get all bearish or anything. Um, and again, if you this is the ES, if you did not see this, this was what happened after the close last night. And and if you have not seen the news, this was uh, more of the same China trade war tariff talk and saber rattling going back and forth and that kind of thing. Um, this has been going on for quite some time and will continue to go on, I'm sure, for quite some time. Um, again, this was after hours and, you know, it's a pretty, pretty big drop. Let's back this out just a little bit. Let me switch back to the S and P here and I'll show you in the, in the bigger picture. Um, well, as a matter of fact, let me do this. Let me pull this over and look at it on this chart. So in the, you know, in the bigger picture, and again, we're just talking about the S and P right now. Um, this is our all time high 2872. And we just cannot, we've just not been able to get through that 2800 level. Um, you know, we came up to it there, there, kind of got close there, here. And all every time we failed, you know, at 2800, and we did again. And so, you know, you could look at that thing, depend at, at this chart, and, and say, well, you know, based on this, we're going to go back down here. There's a 200 day, it would make sense we could come back down here. You know, maybe this is support, maybe supports all the way over here at any one of these levels, possibly. Um, but I think that, you know, we, we have the financial start reporting on Friday with JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and um, several others. And then next week we get into kind of the real meat of earnings season. The next two weeks are going to really be um, all of the big guys. And the next three weeks, all of them are going to report. Um, so I'm, I'm having a hard time believing that we're going to sell off and, and crash ahead of, of earnings. So let's flip this over and we'll put on some voodoo lines here and take a look. And as you can see, we've got a skyline right here and this is 2762 right there. Um, and we're, you know, we're close right there. We are, we closed at 2774 today so yes we could come down and touch this i think that would be a good level of support uh that's obviously the next level of support there and i think from there you know we come back up here the next test obviously would be 2800 if we get through that um then you know we come up here to our snow line at 2829 
Um, and there are other levels in here, other fib levels in between here. But you know, the point is that um, if we are going to continue to have weakness, I th I don't think it's going to be uh, deep dive weakness. I think we might come down here, um, you know, touch that. And if that holds, of course, you know, then I think we bounce. I'm looking to buy this dip. And um, and the main reason is earnings. You know, I just don't think people want to get short ahead of, uh, of all these earnings coming out. If you guys saw, um, matter of fact, take a look over here. If we look down the list, there's a lot of red, right? But look, Amazon up 11 bucks. A net's positive. Um, let's see, a couple of odds and ends. CRM, really, really super strong um, tech name there. Uh, Google, up. Uh, it was down pretty good bit this morning. Turned around and came back up. Uh, so you know, again, you can um, you can ILM in, you know, etc. Just you can see that the techs are Netflix, you know, uh, Oracle, Palo Alto. So the techs are driving this rally. And they have been for a while. I think they'll continue to drive. And again, I don't think people are going to, um, I just don't think the market's going to sell off and go into a tailspin and, and crash ahead of earnings. And um, doesn't mean we can't have some, you know, selling. But again, I think the selling might be shallow and contained. So I am using this to buy. Uh, you want to buy the strength. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm I added a little more to Amazon today. I'm looking to to try to add to some of these uh, strong names that we've all been talking about. And, um, you know, we could look at the NASDAQ and the Russell. They're kind of the same way. Uh, but, you know, in general, let's get back over here. In general, let's look at the rut because the rut's been leading us. And we hit the new all-time high here. And, you know, and that failed. Um, and that was the double top right there. Um, I think we'll see, you know, more upside out of the Russell um, and the same thing with the NASDAQ you know we've got very very similar patterns here but uh, but again you know think about the bigger picture and you know would you really want to get short here and start trying to um, get super hedged on the downside and, and super short right ahead of earnings which could um, you know pull us dramatically up higher, assuming earnings are good and assuming, assuming the techs continue to lead and so forth. And the answer is no, I don't want to get short this. Um, you know, I'm okay with sizing sh smaller and, you know, and being careful, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not getting short this. So anyway, that is my take on the market for today. I don't have a setup for you specifically because, um, you know, we we're still, we've got some earnings trade plays in trades in place and, um, you know, again, at this point, I want to see how we trade tomorrow and into Friday. Remember, next Friday we have uh, option expiration. We should rally into that. And tomorrow is technically pit bull low, but, you know, that I don't really see that happening um, in a dramatic fashion tomorrow after today's weakness. But um, we shall see. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Gives you a you know, bigger picture idea. And um, I will see you guys at the next, next update. And uh, thanks for the time. All right, for those of you that are not aware, we've got a very cool Fibonacci-related course going on right now. It's going to be broken up into a couple of different packages. Um, for the one that we're going to be doing tomorrow, uh, this one is going to be with Carolyn and myself. We're going to be doing live trading using Fibonacci's on a combination of futures markets as well as how to use them to time options trades. And this is, if you're a gold member, it's just $197. You just log in, obviously, and you can utilize that to get your member discount. Otherwise, it's $297. But this is a really, really great way. So I guess just backing up here. So what I found is traders go through a series of steps to get to the point of consistency. And what I found most consistently for people that get consistent is they learn and utilize Fibonacci work. So it works great with squeezes. It works great with buying pullbacks. Uh, but the questions always come up is like, okay, well, which one, which one do I do? Is it the 382? Is it the 50%? Is it the 618? What are extensions? How do I draw them? And if you get a handle on this, it's essentially an automatic guarantee to improve your trading. Okay. So this is just something where I think it's a very small investment where you can actually start seeing dividends right away and um, kind of a no-brainer trade. So again, just go to simplertrading.com forward slash summer. And then if you want to do the entire series, uh, for example, so this one right here is going to be live trading with Carolyn and I, plus the recording that she's already done 
to go through and teach all that stuff. There's also the whole series is going to include a standalone class with Carolyn, Bruce, Henry, and Raggy. And um, that is just five ninety seven for gold members, and you can see how all of us utilize this. So anyway, I think it's fun, and it's going to be something that happens throughout the course of uh, the next couple of weeks. If you go to this page, you can just kind of scroll down, and it'll show you all the dates. Um, a case study in a, of a 267-point NQ setup there, and all the dates with Bruce and all that other stuff too. So good stuff there. And I think that is it. So again, to simplertrading.com forward slash summer. You guys have a great night, and we'll see you at the next update.